morning, Sir John. The press boys would like to work with you, if you don't mind. Yes, I thought they might. Perhaps, John. Thank you. Perhaps we should also congratulate you, Sir John. Well, if you feel you ought to. Can you confirm that you've brought back a contract for the Kabala hydroelectric scheme? Yes, yes, it's all tied up. Seventy-five million pounds has been mentioned. Well, I won't argue, but eighty would be nearer. <laughs> you had no qualms about winning this contract for a French firm? I have no qualms about winning any contract. Well, you are British, Sir John. <laughs> <laughs> I congratulate you on your accuracy, Mr. At all. At all, but no. Isn't it true, Sir John, that several British firms were in for this contract? Well, I should ask them about that. Don't you think you should have been representing a British and not a French firm? Well, the French don't think so. Do you think that what you've done is patriotic? Hmm. Put that to the four-hour-a-day national heroes who represent us abroad. We don't know the difference between a contract and the boys' own paper, the deadbeats who think work is cocktails at sundown, the pension seekers, the time servers, the politicians, the civil servants, living it up on the gravy train. Then put it to me. We don't wish to embarrass you, Sir John. <laughs> I'd always heard you were very humane, Mr. Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> but what about the British firms you were up against in this deal? In memoriam. Fought hard, but lost. And their salesmen on the spot? Oh, they're out on a limb, left to do what they could. Let down by our civil servants out there. Little Napoleon. If Whitehall had been left to run down camp, we'd never have got a man out. You'd think he'd won a bloody war. No, Foreign Secretary. Only a battle. All right, Castle, I watched it. Doesn't it give you an idea, Foreign Secretary? I'd love to haul him before the bar of the house. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, don't be coy, Caswell. Apart from all this um, wilder loot going to Paris, you must admit um, the man has a certain flair. Caswell, what are you trying to tell me? Only that you should use him. I'd sooner recruit from Dartmoor. He has ingenuity. Uh, serve men serving life. And may I remind you, Foreign Secretary? Caswell. Why are you so formal when you're at your most devious? We've known each other for 30 years. We were talking about special situations and trade. So, why drag Wilder in? Arthur, he has landed an 80 million pound contract for the French. Now, I don't like it any more than you do. Wilder, special situations and trade. You need another brandy. <laughs> Good night, Arthur. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Caswell. I mean it. Wilder? In Her Majesty's diplomatic service? Oh, it was your idea, a roving ambassador covering special situations and trade. Yes, but never Wilder. Anyway, there's, there's no such desk. Yet. Caswell. You know career diplomats? They'd as soon die at their posts as serve under Wilder. <laughs> Show me just one. Huh? Who'd ever die at his post? Their occupational hazard is indigestion. You of all people lobbying for him. You practically hacked one another into a communal grave. Oh, he tried to grab my firm. Now the choppers are buried? <laughs> you two made the mafia look like a game of hopscotch. He'll put bombs. And of those feather-bedded nonentities we've got dozing around the world. Yes, and we'd feel the blast, no casual, but thanks for the suggestion. Hello, Foreign Secretary here. Oh, yes, thank you. Yes, Prime Minister. Yes, Prime Minister, right away. I would have thought it more courteous had you mentioned, Caswell, that you'd already raised this at a higher level. <laughs> I, I was just coming to it. I'm not against change, Caswell, even radical change. I can even see certain qualities in Wilder that we need in a roving ambassador, but uh, aren't you even better equipped yourself? 
I know the job I want out of. Some of us casseroles simply grow wrinkled and gray. You just grow more devious. Congratulations, John. Congratulations. Better late than never. I knew there was something big in the wind. The Pamela invited us this morning, but she wouldn't let on, would you, darling? I knew nothing. Coincidence. Oh, no. You sound like a far enough his wife already. <laughs> I need a drink. I'm surprised the French didn't demand a transfer fee. But they'd have wanted it in gold. <laughs> anyway, John, a stroke of genius on your part to think of it. I didn't. Oh, whoever did then. John. I hope they've armed you with enough power. You'll need to pull rank quite a bit if you're to rouse the dead. Mm. Wonderful news, darling. You will, of course, be going with him. Except to the South Pole, to gold. And all those receptions at Lancaster House. Yes, I can't wait to put up my CD plates and park on the yellow band outside the Chinese Embassy. I didn't realize you had diplomatic immunity. Oh, we'd better. Or that the Chinese Embassy had yellow bands. I must be confusing it with four moments. <laughs> Excuse me. We should have gone out to dinner in some Chelsea cellar, just us. Oh, darling, they are your friends. Well, they should be doing what they're best at, boring each other at bridge. Stop at the house this time, Inley. Take it easy. I don't want to get there too early. Something tells me the old boy net in Whitehall will be buzzing tonight. They should give you civil servants jigsaw puzzles to keep you out of mischief. We don't like outsiders poaching the best jobs. The territorial imperative. All animals have it. Some of your people remind me of birds with ducks disease from sitting too long on their tiny empires. Anyway, you're one of us now. Almost. I never believed in reincarnation. It's old blood, sweat, toil, and tears himself. I didn't know it was Halloween. What the hell do you want? For such a long time, John. And you've lost none of your delicacy. Now you better come this way. You will allow me the honor of meeting Pamela again. Caswell, you're looking more distinguished than ever. And you more beautiful. You're making me regret I didn't invite you in the first place. He is a bit ancient for gate-crashing parties. Two years older, John, than when we last met, but at least ten the wiser. I shan't keep him more than a few minutes. Nonsense, Caswell. Stay and join us. No, uh, thank you, but I'm afraid that uh, I think John and I ought to look at the ten o'clock news. You're looking disgustingly robust, Catherine. But I thought he was dead. Hmm? Caswell, darling. He looks to me dangerously match fit. News tonight of fresh riots in the Far East, with hundreds killed and injured. At home, two new strike threats, and further information about the role of Sir John Wilder, whose appointment as Britain's first ever roving ambassador for trade was announced in our earlier bulletin. And news has just been released of another trade appointment. Caswell Bly, a former business colleague of Sir John Wilder's, is named tonight as the minister responsible for special situations and trade. He's given an immediate life peerage. First, news abroad. In the Far East... We make a great team, John. You were told there'd be strings. Strings, yes. But not a noose. It's safe. As long as you don't drop from a great height. You will go back to your conniving political friends, Caswell, and take the smirk off their faces by telling them nothing doing. I have already accepted the job. Publicly. And I have just resigned mine. You're an impulsive man, John. But you are not often foolishly so. This would just make me your leg man. <laughs> <laughs> 
but with a whole world to go at, John. And ambassador status. John. Fleet Street seems to have nothing better to do tonight than to telephone you. I put them all off except Sandy Warren. He says you two are in business again and have the hospitals been warned. He's on the line now, if you'd care to pick it up. Shall I get you a drink? Hello? Sandy. Well, what can I do for you? Well, Sandy, you know I wouldn't have taken the job without knowing. Yes? On the record. And for the record, I am delighted to be working again with... Well, he's uh, getting a bit long in the tooth and is in need of visible support. And I'm increasingly given to good works. Uh, that's off the record. Good night, Sandy. Still scotch on the rocks with water, Caswell? Please, Pamela. I haven't changed. Make it blood. He's going to need every pint of it. I'll keep you, John. Do come in. I had no idea you were such a snob, Caswell. Hmm? To fall for the pox Britannica. Among civilians, John, we must distinguish somehow between the field marshals and the mere colonels of industry. <laughs> no, I, I couldn't live with that. No, what's... what's this? A lot of insects. Give that to the beetles. Oh, they're young bees, Lord Bly. Bees, you say? They're industrious bees, and you're an industrialist. No. Oh, uh, well, sir. What oh, the devil is that? Well, that's a beaver, Lord Bly. I took it for a rat. Very good. Any other ideas, John? I didn't know that life peers qualified for coats of arms. Oh, this one is going to. Well, why not a skull and crossbones with an old fox <laughs> rampant? Remember, the Garter King of Arms has to approve the design. God, that's obscene. Friesen, what are you doing down there? I want the folds right. Well, never mind about the folds. All that matters is that I don't trip up. Lord Bly, it has to be right. Well, John, so there aren't any you like. Out there, they're building steel cars, aeroplanes. Not puncing around in medieval drag. Uh, show Sir John the one I like, Franklin. Yes, sir. Well? Looks like a public lavatory in Soho. Mm. There's the first park railings that Bly Construction ever put up at Bilton. And they're still there. It's those rampant stags I'm not so very keen on. Well, call me at the opening of Parliament. I wouldn't miss it for all the gold in France. No, John, wait, 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 wait. Uh, all right, uh, Friesen, that'll do now. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have a look at uh, some more of those tomorrow. Yes, sir. And if you haven't got those folds right now, I'll hire a blasted robe. What happens when you clap your hands? Get me burned, Wickham. 
You once said that you'd rather drop dead than accept a peerage. Ah, now they'd have to hang me with a silken halter. And when they chuck me out of this job, I'd be able to claim four and a half guineas a day for warming a bench in the law. Every day is your birthday, isn't it, Caswell? Now you can even tell me what to do. Only in the national interest, John. Uh, Burns Wickham? Uh, tell Dowling uh, to meet us uh, in Sir John's room. Oh, and um, ask him to bring the papers on Malia. Malia? Yes. You know the place. I remember how much it cost by construction the last time you went there. Jemima may have the run of the salon today, but I pinched the two best models, in view of your SOS. If roving ambassador means anything at all, darling, it means he roves. Yes, well, he'll not rove alone. Well, I know husbands, darling. An airline ticket gives them fantasies of freedom. From now onwards, it's double bookings or resign. Remy never left the house for two months. Then he upped and went, and all I've had is a cable saying he's interested in silk in Siam. What's inside the silk? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Do you want to see the heavier dresses? I can lay on a special show later this week. For every climate you can think of. God, who's that? Your new private secretary, John. No, I mean that. Sir Peyton Grindley Whittaker. Hyphenated? I'm afraid so. He served Lord Castlereagh after Waterloo, especially at the Congress of Vienna. He helped make sure the defeated French were humanely treated. We may need another like him before long. Now, John, meet Dowling. Lincoln Dowling, Sir John Wilder. How do you do? Well, how's the club taken my appointment? The club? Keep your tongue out of your cheek, darling. We might come in very well together. The club, the career diplomats. And they don't like these appointments from outside. What you mean is that they're plotting like mad to stop them and me. There is a consensus for giving plum jobs to professionals. Well put, darling. Always assuming that this is a plum job, would you like, uh, would you like us to leave you with this bump here for a bit, uh, John? Or... Or what? Dowling could brief you? All I know is a small African nation is showing its gratitude for past British aid by taking over our copper mines and turning over British residents' cars in the street. Five British subjects were beaten up last night and an aircraft sent in by the mining company today was detained and its crew arrested. Send out a battalion of paratroops or the International Red Cross. There could be uh, some personal risk, John. Oh, if you'd rather not go. I've booked two seats on tomorrow's flight via Lagos. Make it three. Three? Three! Hardly the place to take Pamela, John. One via Zurich. Via Zurich? Are you out of hearing, darling? Well, what are you waiting for? John, you learn that this department is not rich in men of Dowling's caliber. Well, you ought to know. You planted him. He's the best at his rank. Now, he also knows Whitehall, and he knows the diplomatic service. And he's out to know what I'm doing. If you didn't put him in here to check on me, somebody else put him in here to check on both of us. Oh, and... Caswell, uh, Minister, do something about this mausoleum and see that Goldilocks there is either decently buried or burnt. Our service has no place for men like Wilder. They're motivated by greed, security risks, all of them. He's got all the money he'll ever need. His kick is power. We have evidence that he's been a heavy buyer recently of shares in aircraft and construction firms. They're the industries he knows best. All the same, darling, I smell scandal. You never did with Philby. 
And that was rather below the belt, darling. I know the Wilders. They're dangerous outsiders. With luck, Malia frightened him off, from all I, I hear. I can't honestly say he went pale with fright. Oh, Kerr, darling, he's experienced. My briefing says he's never gambled in his life. I trust he hasn't succeeded in mesmerizing you already. I told him I'd book two seats on tomorrow's flight. He told me to book a third. A third? A third man? Or oh, a woman. Who? I should imagine his wife. Oh. Well, if so, she goes at his expense. She can afford it, Fowler. She's a woman of enormous personal wealth. Oh. And I hear considerable presence. Heavens! Where's he, Ambassador, to? Sir Peyton Grindley Whittaker. He was very busy after Waterloo. Well, met his, if that's anything to go by. Hansard, debates in Parliament. 1066 and all that. The plague and Bonnie Prince Charlie. What? Is that there? <laughs> if we look hard enough, we'll probably find the debate on Oliver Cromwell. You can't work here as it is. It's hideous. Yes? Good. All right. And send in tea for three, Jane. Three? Ina, the first of the diplomatic correspondents. That nervy accountant with the clickety ball pen. Your new private secretary at the F.O. No. They have given you one. The very best. Is she young? She is a he and needs watching. Well, have him moved. Well, they'd only replace him with somebody else with the same brief to keep an eye on me. Is it worth it, darling? Oh, yes. I'm going to put in somebody to watch the watcher. Tom, darling, I had no idea. What do you mean he didn't let on? Not a murmur. Don, it's been years. Uh, two, exactly. <laughs> How's business? Uh, oh, up to here. I don't know where the country's balance of payments would be without us. Wonderful, Don. Well, that's not what I heard. Well, the world's full of knockers. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I heard that you had less than three months' work in hand that your technical director was leaving to join by construction, that you had two very bad debts outstanding, which only could be recovered by expensive litigation. You have opened Joanna Southcott's box. Sounds desperate. Oh, well, isn't it? Come on, you can tell me. How near to folding are you and Kenneth? Oh, no, Don. Oh, it's a bad patch. We'll get through it. Don, I want you back as my PA. <laughs> I'm sorry, John. The days are over when captains went down with their ships. They grabbed the first seat in the lifeboat. Well, thanks for the offer, John. I appreciate it. He's but... not being kind, Don. He really wants you back. In the civil service? Same jungle. Only the predators wear pinstripes. Don, if you stay on with Ken, how much capital would you need? Charity is the last thing they want. Don, suppose I guaranteed your firm one year's work. I've no doubt you could. Two phone calls, that's all. You're very generous. There's nothing for nothing, Don. I want your services. Ah. Three years ago, Kenneth Bly landed the power station contract in Malia. Oh, he's had it on his conscience ever since. He wasn't cut out for bribing people. It was rewarding for someone, a, a minister in Malia. I know. I countersigned a cheque for 50,000 pounds. Yes. Kenneth wouldn't want that cupboard opened up. He knows the man with the key. You know Kenneth, John. He wouldn't betray a confidence like that, even if it paid him to. Try him. No, John, he's my partner. Well, wallow in bankruptcy together. I can see you don't, Don. When, um, would you want me to start? Now. Now, this minute? I am flying to Mario tomorrow. You, all being well, will be coming also, but via Zurich. 
Where do I go, Vaya? Malia is no place for women. <laughs> Nor for men, unless they're travelling in tanks. I suppose that your vaccinations are all up to date. I'm not going anywhere for you again, John. Oh, yes, you are. Glad Kenneth is so well. I uh, can give you further proof of identity. Not necessary, Mr. Henderson. Kenneth talked to me last night over the telephone. He said you were coming to Zurich and uh, described you accurately. Oh. Uh, Kenneth asked me to admit that this was asking a lot. Numbered accounts in our banks must be secret, Mr. Henderson. Otherwise, uh, where would Switzerland be? You know, Every income tax department in the world spends too much time and the taxpayers' money trying to penetrate us. Uh, Kenneth did say that you might help. I could not possibly disclose the identity of a client with a numbered account, Mr. Henderson. I see. However... three recent deposits in the account you are interested in. I hope this will do for your purposes. Oh, yes, indeed. You will, of course, not try to communicate these figures over the telephone or by cable. You can rely on that. I suppose you have some arrangement with Kenneth over... I always did find my country's neutrality embarrassing, Mr. Henderson. Kenneth well knows this. All three payments were made by a Chinese cultural mission. The ambassador's compliments. I fixed your baggage through customs. The car's outside. Uh, John Lacey. How do you do? Lincoln. Uh, we were learners together. Now you're an expert. Will put us in the picture. Is it any worse today? Not really, Wilder. A brick through the embassy windows. Two British businessmen's cars overturned. A couple of beatings up. I suppose you know who those two are. Marley and Special Branch. Trained by Scotland Yard and uh, here, no doubt, for your protection. No doubt. Well, they have done things since I was last here. They have some determined ministers. Don't forget, Lacey, I've had dealings with them. Was my meeting with the Prime Minister tonight or first thing tomorrow morning? Uh, I'm not certain. You don't know? Well, uh, yes. As a matter of fact, the Ambassador wants to brief you first. Brief me? Well, Sir Trevelyan felt it vital you should first see him. You did get my message. Your telegram got through, yes. And nothing has been done about my appointment with the Prime Minister? No, Sir John. I merely wanted to warn you against rash and ill-considered moves. You were told to fix an appointment with the Prime Minister. Diplomacy, Wilder, like the big business you understand, is a matter for professionals. <laughs> you know about turning a profit. I know about representing our country abroad. Tell that to the mining engineers who've been arrested. An inconvenience, Wilder. They haven't been shot. <laughs> Even to me. They're the old age pensioners before you get them out. Wilder, we have been here for more than a hundred years. Only now the rules have changed. We're as foreign here as the French. And from what I hear, more foreign just now than the Chinese. Wilder, I do not want you charging in on the Prime Minister here. It would be a waste of time not to say stupid. He is a friend of ours. He may be in the driving seat, but others are doing the steering for the moment. I know who's doing the driving. May I? Get me the Minister of Home Security, Mr. Naranda. I'm glad you've done your homework, Wilder. We still won't see you. We'll see. 
It was Naranda who brought in the Chinese. I know. After our lords and masters and their wisdom cut off our aid to this poor land. He's a fanatic wilder, an idealist. I know my idealists, Ambassador. They look you straight in the eye for five minutes and then start trimming. <laughs> Not Naranda. Especially Naranda. Yes? One moment. Naranda is out. Thank you. So he's out. I happen to know that he is very much in. How good is that security? I'm sorry, Wilder? If I send a cable, will it be vetted? Well, the service is the embassy at your disposal, Wilder. We can send in cipher or by Queen's Messenger. No, I don't want that. I want to send an open cable. Will it be vetted? <laughs> Our chaps have been out here, teaching them how to do it with diplomacy. Good. Uh, Humphreys. Humphreys. Mr. Uh, John Wilder has a telegram to send. He wants it to go in clear. It's to uh, Don Henderson, Hotel Plaza, Zurich, via our consulate there. Proceed, Malia, urgentist. Wilder. But I thought you said earlier that he is already on his way here. If he hadn't been, I should have known by now. Only if things went wrong was he told to use the official grapevine. That he won't even get your telegram. Somebody else might. It will not be sent. Tell Sir John Wilder to come over and see me. Don't you want your bed socks? Hmm? I must say, your appointment surprised me. I always thought of you as purely commercial. Like you? Britain cut off our aid. She hardly has the moral right to seem offended because we choose more generous friends. I'm talking about you. <laughs> Such a dull subject, Wilder. Look, Miranda, I want those Chinese kicked out of the mines and the British staff set free. I'm not Prime Minister here. It is my brother-in-law you should be talking to. Your puppet. London has the answer in its own hands, Wilder. She can resume aid to my land. Or have its subjects arrested or clobbered over the head or the property confiscated. Things must be brought home to you. By blackmail? <laughs> Who's the hypocrite now? I'm just bringing things home to you. By the way, how is my friend Kenneth Bly and his partner, who used to be your assistant? Henderson. Ah, that's the one. He came here with Kenneth, though I never met him. He's on his way here now. From London. Zurich. Are you sure? Are you sure he isn't? I want facilities to visit the British engineers in the mine tomorrow. I'm sorry, Wilder. I can't let you. Your Chinese overlords would not approve? No, I wouldn't. Look, you have my word that your fellow countrymen are not being roughly treated. Your word is not worth a Chinese yen. What was it you told the parliament here in that speech right from the heart? I have done everything in my power to ensure without fear or favor that the contract for the new power station will go to the firm with the best design and the lowest tender. Your firm got it, Wilder. Yes, we got it. What did you get? But these are the methods of gangsters, darling. Wilder grew up in a rough school. Well, even so, he must be stopped. 
God knows what diplomacy is coming to. We don't know for certain what information Henderson is bringing. Well, you can be sure if Wilder's behind it, it won't be cosy. If Miranda did indeed yield to temptation in Wilder's murky past, then the Prime Minister might well be grateful to be told about it. He might even be induced to agreeing to talk starting on condition that Wilder was recalled to the UK. Wouldn't that mean, Ambassador, that we are using Wilder's gangster methods? Yes, you're quite right, darling. We mustn't lower our own standards. Besides, we don't yet know what Henderson has got on the Randa, do we? <laughs> Mr. Henderson? Yes? Follow me, please. Turn out your pockets. Wait now, wait a minute. Quickly, please. Look, I have diplomatic immunity. Your name is not on our diplomatic list, Mr. Anderson. Now, please, will you please cooperate? Your clothes. Take them off. Get my wife, please. You won't have to wait much longer, Mr. Anderson. You have been refused leave to land. Have you contacted Sir John Wilder? You are being returned where you came from, on the first available flight. I asked to speak to Sir John Wilder. I'm sorry. We have no idea where he is. I will leave it to you, Sir John. Where the hell are you going? It's very urgent. Would you like a wash, Miss Anderson? You'll feel much better for it. This way, please. Don Henderson. Mm hmm? Lincoln Dowling. Wilder's private secretary, or should I say joint private secretary. John Lacey, Her Britannic Majesty's Embassy, Malia. That's empty. I believe you have something to communicate, Sir John. Is he all right? Five minutes ago, he was rather red in the face, otherwise in good nick. Mm. Has anybody got a pen? Just tell him never count numbers possible. Deposits of 10,000 on August the 4th, 10,000 on September the 9th, and 5,000 in gold bullion on December the 20th. Um, a Chinese cultural mission. Mr. Henderson has to go to the plane now. Oh, that was short and sweet. Thanks for the welcome. Does it mean anything? Only if we know who paid them. Some Chinese cultural mission. That's all we need. You've begun well, Sir John. It's a bit drastic, isn't it? My brother-in-law agrees. It is the best solution. Well, if there's anything I can do for you in Britain... Ah, we're going to Switzerland. 
There's much to be said for neutrality. But I may yet need your help in England one day. What about Henderson? Oh, we got all we need. He won't come to any harm. Mr. Henderson? Yes? Yours, I think. It has a few personal things in it I thought you would need. Miranda. You leaving? Yes. For good? For a long while. <laughs> Don't apologize. It's all part of the game. I think you should know that my brother-in-law wasn't giving the Chinese too much rope. Then may we take it, Prime Minister, that the British mining staff are now free. I've ordered their immediate release. And the mine? It was always our intention to leave it in British hands, Salyon. That isn't as it looked to us. It wasn't the way we intended it to look, for the moment. We need the best of both worlds. One of us had to offer a hand to the Chinese. It was a difficult duty. Miranda is more pro-British, even than I. Like you, Sir John, he had a job to do. Even though your methods were hardly diplomatic. On occasion, one has to try something new. Or someone, Sir John. And good news tonight of the British mining staff in Malia released from detention. Sir John Wilder, the roving ambassador who secured their release, arrived back in Britain tonight and said, this is a triumph. Gone the chance for your big rescue act, Caswell. He did it off his own bat. I'd like to know how much it's going to cost us. Yeah, stop touching our money box, Caswell. We've no bribes to pay. Congratulations, Wilder. Thank you, Foreign Minister. Well, we've got your department off to a good start, Caswell. And I hope you can keep it up. Now I'm wanted in my office. Oh, you must see this, Wilder. I hear your wife is leading a petticoat revolution in the old place. Ah. So tatty, darling. And as I shall be coming with you on your future jaunts, I thought this was the last opportunity I'd have to do something here. Well, what do you think, darling? All you need is your own private lift. I think I can work here. 